Welcome to the Portland Real Estate Podcast, Oregon and Southwest Washington's number one show for real estate news and information. Without further ado, here are your hosts and a couple of guys who as busy realtors and successful brokerage owners know a thing or two about real estate. Steve Nassar of Premier Property Group and Joe Fistolo of Soldera Properties. Welcome to the Portland Real Estate Podcast, episode number 144. We have the, the fabulous Kurt Von Wasmuth, CEO, president of RMLS, who is always full of fascinating, amazing statistics and little tidbits that how we can keep this podcast under five hours today will be an absolute miracle. Uh, I'm Joe Fostolo of Soldera Properties and the admin of Masters in Real Estate. And we're trying to bring the best, most informative content to you guys through the Portland Real Estate Podcast. And to introduce Kurt, I'm going to introduce my buddy and co-host Steve Nassar of Premier Property Group. Take it away, Steve. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate the introduction. We are thrilled to have back one of our favorite regular guests. Kurt, you've been on this at least a couple times, maybe even three over the years. Uh, and you yeah. are mm -hmm. such a natural. You've got your own microphone. You've got a better setup than Joe and I. We've got microphone envy. Look at that. that, is, that a, <laughs> is that a shore there? No, road. Oh, road. Man, yeah. you see, you see. Should have called you for advice when I was buying mine. <laughs> but no, thank you. We're thrilled to have you. You're always entertaining. You've got great stuff to share. My understanding. And we and what a pivotal time, right? Like we there's so much happening in our world. Um, I mean, gosh, guys, in, in the minutes before getting on here, um, the Fed raised um three quarters of a percentage point, um, the Fed funds rate. So which it was a surprise in the days in the recent days it wasn't a surprise but you know a month ago that would have been a surprise they were expecting a half basis point um a half a percentage point i should say and um and uh you know there was some there was some pretty scary uh uh inflation data last friday that really roiled the all the markets the mortgage market um interest rates on mortgages are up about a half percent in a matter of days we've gone from the you know five and three quarter to now we're we're pushing pushing mid sixes 6.3 somewhere thereabouts big things happening so who better to tell us what they're seeing in real time with real data as and some forward indicators than the man himself who is in control of all the data and sees it all. So thank you, Kurt. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you guys. I love it every single time. I feel like uh, you've you've done everyone a disservice and everyone should lower their expectations dramatically. <laughs> so <laughs> I would feel better if everyone did. <laughs> Well, take well, it know, away, Kurt. With Let's... with with the corrections, so we're we're going through change right now. Um, yeah. Rates, stock market, crypto, days on market. We're seeing price reductions. We're seeing houses sell for full price, mm -hmm. which in the year many many years ago that would be cause of celebration. And <laughs> and uh, but just sold full price. You know, people look at it differently. I don't know that enough time has gone by for you to really have lots and lots of data because really it's we all knew it was coming and we were kind of seeing it for the last year or so but really the last three months is when we started seeing the slowing mm -hmm. do you have uh any statistics or data data or anything that we might find interesting so keep in mind <clears throat> the latest market action and the infographics that we share on the newsletter page through RMLS web. Um, all of that is as of the end of May. Uh, so we're 15 days into June, but it's too early for us to start analyzing June because, you know, weird things happen when you try and do it, uh, try and do it only halfway through a month. I can tell you that 
there are some interesting statistics to talk about. Uh, for the most part, at the end of May, the market is still super hot. Like there's not, there's not a lot of things changing. The world didn't change overnight. So uh, everyone likes to talk about the fact that uh, you know prices are really high. Well, we hit an all-time high in average sales price for the Portland metro area. Um, and that is $649,600. So your average sale price was basically $650,000. Now, Crazy. I'm not a big fan of using averages. Um, averages are a philosophical debate. <laughs> I like to use median. And when you look at the median price, it's down dramatically over that. Averages can be swayed by extremely low and extremely high uh, sales. The median is at about five hundred and seventy-five. dollars so yes, we hit an all-time high in average, and the median is also outrageously high, but that isn't news. We've all known that for a while. Like things have been getting more and more and more expensive in the Portland metro area for a while. We're seeing that statewide. We're seeing it in Washington. It's, it's pretty much global. I think that's an interesting point, Kurt. I've never thought of it that way. And I want to I want to help our listeners because, I mean, you know, high, high school and, and averages and median is a long time ago for a lot of us. Oh, yeah. So average is when you take all the home prices together, add them up and then divide them by the number of homes. That's right. And so what you're saying, if there was an 80 million, one property, 80 million dollars, which there yes. isn't, by the way, right. and no. in there, all of a sudden that skewed up. Yeah. The average or vice versa. Away. If there was. Yeah. If grandma gave her kids some property that was a million, one dollar, which I right. probably wouldn't make it on the MLS, even though that does happen sometimes, right. that right. would skew it down. Yes. And what you're saying is median mm -hmm. is the one where you take all of them in a row. Let's say there's a hundred sales and you go, what was number 50? It was right. this price, correct? That's exactly right. It's the point at which just as many houses sold for more than that price point than sold for less than that price point. And for me, and I think most statisticians, it's a more reliable market indicator when talking about houses or actually when talking about anything that has a physical corollary in the physical world. Like if you're mm -hmm. talking about widgets or cars or trees, it doesn't matter. Um, averages, on the other hand, those are really good when you're talking about sort of philosophical pursuits. You're getting rather erudite at that point because you're talking about things that only exist in your mind. They don't exist in the real world, whereas median does. A mm. median, you can point to it. It's right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I've never thought of it that way. I appreciate that insight because I always kind of just quote the average, but I see what, what you're saying is, yeah, no, good, good stuff. And they are different. They're $75,000 yeah. apart. So yes. interesting. Yeah. And they're always yeah. different. It's sort of interesting. You can see, you can sort of test that theory. Anytime you're looking at our statistics or anyone's statistics, if you're able to see both the average and the median over time, the larger that swing, the more you're seeing things on the end affect things. And it's mm -hmm. sort of interesting to take a look at that. Yeah. Keep I'm, going. Glad you, I'm glad you guys implemented the uh, infographics. It's like Thank there's you. all these amazing hidden tools that yeah. RMLS has that if more bro brokers knew about it. So I printed one out. This is for like all of Oregon. And I guess the people watching live, there's a video version live now and in, in masters. And there will be a video version in about a week live or of this live broadcast on YouTube. Mm -hmm. All the other podcasts are just audio only, but having this infographic, it's amazing to get the average sale price, the median price, the total market time, the inventory in months, you know, the absorption rate and active listings. Now, this is a little too broad because the one I printed out was for the entire state of Oregon right. and the Washington people, the entire state of Washington that RMLS has access to. Um, you probably want to condense it down to usable facts for you. And again, if you if you go by the the average sale price, if you have a couple off the chart listings that sell or really low ones that sell, you're skewing the whole thing, and and you're actually giving a false perception of what's really going on. So, I do like the the median point. But one mm -hmm. thing I'd like to point out is that I you know I don't do this enough, but. RMLS is staffed 
with 53 people who come to work every day trying to make realtors more of a success than they were the day before. Like there's, there's, I can't say enough about my staff. And the thing that I wanna say about these statistics is that the reason they were created was that we wanted people to have something that they could share. If you're an RMLS subscriber, you don't need permission to share this stuff, it's yours. Share it with anyone, put it in your newsletter, put it in your email broadcast, put it wherever you want. You pay for it, it's your statistics, you can use them however you want. If you're not an RMLS subscriber, well, then you've got to ask for permission. And it says that down at the bottom. But if, you, if you're one of our customers, preach it high and low. It's yours to use however you want. And I, and I see a lot of the realtors. So if you go to RMLS to the market action report, mm -hmm. and when you're viewing it um, up there somewhere in the URL, it will say the word public, yeah. which means you can copy that URL and share it to social media and and realtors i mean it takes a while mm -hmm. you know but eventually we catch on and mm -hmm. then you could just post that link onto your social media yep. and it's like hey here's what's going on in your neck of the woods check right. this out yeah boom and you can post the whole thing you could just post a uh mm -hmm. whatever you want and there's no you know saving it downloading it converting it to a jpeg it's just it's link driven which is great yeah. Um, and we, we need do to it for the whole, we do it for the whole state. We're doing one for Coos County and Brookings down in Curry County. And we're do, going it all the way out East. Like we've got, and all of Southwest Washington, we've got a ton of these that we're churning out every month. There's a lot of work that goes into this often, quite often these things get released and people are like, well, couldn't you just make this one little change? And it's like, well, yeah, I could, but that means changing 37 different reports. <laughs> like that's not a little change all of a sudden that's outrageously hard. Right. Mm -hmm. Go back to the stats, Kurt. You were yeah. you, so you you were go, you were talking about medians and averages for May. Keep yeah, going. so the market is still super hot. The prices are still way up, but there are some interesting things that we have found. Uh, active listings. So we know everyone's been complaining about inventory being so low, and yes, inventory is still low, a uh, big deal. We've been less than a month of inventory for quite some time. We've been. F we had a small uptick into one month's worth of inventory in the latest market action. I expect that to come down as we head into the summer months. But what's interesting is that May, mark, or May active listings were up. So if you look at the Portland metro area, you look at Coos Bay, you look at Polk County or Marion County, uh, we've had four months in a row where the number of active listings went up. That's great. That just means more properties for your buyers to look at. It means more choices out there and a little bit less pain. But let's face it, it's still painful. One month's worth of inventory is not the goal. Uh, no one has ever said that that was a healthy market. Uh, and as we start seeing that now, as we start seeing this market cool a little, perhaps that number will become more and more and more palpable. But it's not the end of the world. One month's worth of inventory, we've been fluttering around that for well over a year now and it it works people complain mm -hmm. but it works mm -hmm. one of the stats that grabbed my attention in your talking points kurt mm -hmm. is new construction yeah and i i take i put a lot into that first of all i'm living it i work with a regional builder yeah and we opened a subdivision in february mm -hmm. we would release a home on thursday and review offers on Monday, and we usually had several, and they were usually quite a bit over, including 60, right. 70,000 over. Yeah. In the last couple of weeks, they've now got five actives that mm. are available, um, and they're offering some incentives, and they're not alone. I think that's, I think we're seeing that. And, and I think that's telling of, of the, the change in momentum because these are professional sellers. They know what they're doing and they see something changing and they, and they want to, you know, get in front of it as much as possible. Right. Talk about those stats. Um, so one of the things we found is that the Oregon Office of Economic Analysis forecasts that construction growth is not only solid, but will be for quite some time. Uh, as far as new development or new construction goes, it should be promising in Oregon throughout the rest of this year. Our data actually backs that up. Uh, we went from 139 new construction listings 
in uh, April, all the way up to 196, which means that's 57 brand new new construction listings just in one month. That's a huge leap for us, especially in new construction. Like that is fantastic. Uh, the same trend is holding true for our friends north of the river up in southwest Washington. They had 20 new new construction listings. They went from 73 in April up to 93 up in um, in May. So we've got we've got actual proof to back up what the Oregon Office of Economic Analysis is saying, and that is that new construction is going to be strong. It is, and it's going to be strong throughout the rest of this year. And mm -hmm. I think that's good news. I think that's exactly what we need is a little bit more, a little bit more building. And I know that there's pain points with building and I know that it's expensive and I know that there's nothing that certainly nothing RMLS can do about it, but it's good. It's good to see these kind of numbers and it's good to see that stuff come on the market. There it, was a post in masters over the weekend, I think, where it talked about how some of the big builders are starting to play nice again with realtors. Mm. They're starting to, uh, to, to, to their their broker their commission their buyer's agent commission is starting starting to come back to what it was before houses sold themselves yeah yeah that's good that's i love it it's hear really that. good that's it's really good it'll it's it's kind of crappy too in that they treat us that way in my opinion. but but <laughs> yeah. i mean that, that you know we're we, we're 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 there when they need us and then they forget about us when they don't but it, it's good that's been going on since the beginning of time because, mm -hmm. you know, some of them are modeled that way. Um, and, and Zillow tried with the iBuyer. Open door. Uh, I don't know if they're doing it now or not doing it. They're on and off all the time. Uh, Rex was like that. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the builders like Lennar, it's like, hey, we compensate our brokers. It's a flat fee of whatever it is. Right. Tiny, tiny fee. We do have our worth because if the algal algorithm worked, that you look at what sold and you say, okay, your house is worth this, and Zillow buys it, they would still be in the market. But instead, they got kicked out, and they're however what six hundred million, uh, you know, in in debt from right. everything they did. So realtors do have a value, and. I'm really happy to see the builders building good products in good locations. The one thing I kind of wish is, is a different side of it, which doesn't involve realtors or RMLS, but I wish the county and the permits and everything would make it far easier on them to do their thing. Yeah. We don't want them to clear cut neighborhoods and forests and, and build houses, right. but the cutting trees and the permits and all that stuff they're well, not i think the fees too help. oh my gosh the fees are exorbitant so yeah. they're really not helping the builders do what they do and essentially not helping the public because the public loves new construction right it, you can't fight new construction right. and you know well built in a good location and i just think it should be easier and cheaper for the builders to do what they do well, I can say, I know that you're right. I mean, there's nothing RMLS can do about it, but I do know that uh, PMAR um, and a bunch of local associations around the state are working desperately to try and get the attention of those local governments to try and bring up exactly that point. Like you can't make it too hard and you can't make it too expensive because if all people can build their $700,000 homes, that's, there's no starter homes at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What other what other stuff do you want to share with us here in this in this document you put together? Um, so there was one thing I wanted to talk about, which I think is interesting. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. We did an article last year that I was pretty proud of. I asked Grant, our communication specialist, to look into this. And we had found that during uh, the pandemic, during the whole COVID-19 thing, we had found that the number, the properties that had review deadlines, and otherwise, those listings that had in them, all offers must be submitted by Friday at five o'clock, were receiving a dramatically higher sales price at the end of the day. And we weren't the only ones that noticed it. There were MLSs all over the country who were looking at that going, ha, huh, isn't that fascinating? Uh, and a lot of people spent a lot of time making new fields and, uh, you know, sort of putting a lot of information or uh, importance on it. 
we took a look back now that the market is starting to cool a little bit we're seeing sort of some leveling off in a number of different indicators and the reverse seems to be true now uh those properties that have reviewed deadlines are actually bringing in lower prices than those who do not have I, I get it i get it yeah I, we we stopped putting a review deadline with that builder before that reason because it just scares people away i yep. mean it's when there's so much demand you yeah. you can you can afford to scare a couple of people away who are right. like screw this i don't want to be in a bidding war right but when demand craters and is, yeah. is is dramatically less you do not want to scare anybody away especially right. as they're yeah. looking at mortgage rates and other scary stuff already and and going you know and wondering if they should do something so yeah interesting data yeah. uh the other thing that i thought i don't have this on my talking points but this is something that i'm just i'm super fascinated by is the fact that we can back up a number of trends that happened because of covid uh, we can back that up by showing data in the database. So, for instance, one of the things that uh, this global pandemic taught people was that their backyard is their most important asset. Like they have to have a backyard because they need some place to be outside while still remaining safe. And you can prove that by looking at the searches in the RMLS database, the number of saved searches and prospects that are going out that include lot size and acreage shot up like 1200%. Like hmm. the number of people who are searching for that information went up dramatically. You can also see that people are looking for larger square footage now because they're using their homes for things they haven't before. They're using them for doing Zoom meetings like this and they need to have a quiet room where they can meet or they're putting, uh, they're putting in gym equipment in their room. Uh, you know, and you can look at, it's fascinating to me that something big like this happens and then I can prove what people are doing just by looking at our own database. Look at what people are saving in the database, look at what they're searching by. I just find stuff like that fascinating. I think it's, I think it's great. Yeah, no, that is, that's all really, really true. It's interesting I, when I'm um, with a seller and we're looking at comps and we're um, pricing their house, a lot of, so much emphasis is on the backyard. Like yes. if I see, you know, this, this one sold for 800, this one sold for 850, this one sold for 900. When I'm getting to the 900, I'm I'm looking for that wow backyard. I yeah. know that there's something going on in that backyard because yep. more often than not, that is where that extra oomph is coming in price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you and you can kind of it, it, it kind of makes sense anecdotally, too, because you look at the number of people that are buying like farm equipment. There's way more people who are putting like chicken coops in their backyard. We, everyone ran out and got a pandemic puppy like the, everyone has way more pets and stuff and they need larger space to take care of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. I mm -hmm. love it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. with that, so with that, you know, I always thought it would be amazing to have two home offices because if if you have a couple that's together and they're both professionals and especially in that scary time when nobody would meet face to face yeah you sort of need your own little office at home they really need yeah. two offices mm -hmm. where you could talk as loud as you want yell and scream have mm -hmm. your microphone have your your camera um have you been seen from from the real estate company level have you been have you been seeing lots of uh commercial uh shifting of offices and shrinking footprints because you were on episode 122 yeah. which was right when COVID happened and okay. we were all predicting that yeah. maybe this is going to be the big catalyst for people reducing footprints or getting rid of offices together right have you noticed that or do you even pay attention to that you know I, our database isn't really reliable when it comes to uh, uh, commercial uh, because most of the commercial is done outside of the RMLS database. But I can tell you there are two interesting trends that I have heard about from multiple sources. One is that um, we thought, and in fact, I predicted, like, like an idiot, I predicted there would be a mass exodus out of places like where we are right now, where you find these office parks. And everybody was learning how to work from home and they were just going to leave. That isn't happening. And it's not happening because everyone's locked into leases. <laughs> 
we're mm -hmm. one of them. Like you look at our MLS, we're in a seven year lease. I have the vast majority of my employees are working from home right now, but I can't just up and leave. So that's going to take some time to iron Do you think out. you would if you weren't? Today, I, I by the way, I drive by your beautiful new location all the time. I see your big armless sign there. Yeah, um, it's so close to our world. So yeah. I appreciate that. But do you think you would if if you weren't in the least like you guys think you could all work pretty well from home? Um, I think we will probably always need some footprint. We're going to need some conference rooms. We're going to need the boardroom. I mean, the board has to have a place to meet. We're going to have to have some places for people to, you know, sort of hang out and do some brainstorming and some thinking. But I can't, uh, I can't imagine a world in which our footprint declines or, you know, we start sharing space. Like it would mm -hmm. be great if we started sharing space with some other real estate uh companies here that would be fantastic but i don't i don't foresee us making any changes right away because i think the prudent thing to do is to wait i think there's an awful lot of people who love working from home and we have a number of lessons that have yet to be learned yet um i, I don't consider myself an expert but i can tell you just running a company like our size there's a lot of people love to work from home but you lose something and what people seem to forget is you lose that middle management or that early manager. They don't know how to manage. They don't know how to take care of problems. They're not watching other people do it. They're not. There's a number of things like that that we're going to start missing out on in the coming years as everyone's working from home. And I don't think that's bad. I think that's great. I think this is the evolution of what is the workforce. I think it's going to be good. I just think there's a lot of lessons that have yet to be learned. Mm hmm. Yeah. One thing we're we're experiencing, um, and and we're we're working through it, is um, hybrid meetings, right? Yeah, where you've got five to ten people in the room, and then maybe the same amount on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big focus, or should be a big focus for a lot of companies and and you know businesses. Yep, is how to do that right so yeah. that you don't alienate either right. party, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the problems is that if you have, like right now, if you have a hybrid meeting, some people are in the room and some people are online, what you're hearing is that people online feel left out, like they're not a part of the conversation, they have to sort of insert themselves into the conversation, no one's taking them into account. And then you find knee jerk reactions, I think it was, was it, I think it was Facebook or Meta, whatever I'm supposed to call them these days, I think it was them that decided if one person is going to be online, then everybody has to. So even if you're all sitting in the same room, everyone has to do this virtual meeting thing. And I think, I think that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. We have to get better at this and we will. It's mm -hmm. just, this has been pretty quick. I mean, this mm -hmm. has been a little bit less than two years where we're trying to figure out how to do this. Actually, way less than two years. Yeah, yeah. What else you got for us, Kurt? Um, the only stuff. other thing that I, the second trend that I know of in commercial is that a lot of people are buying now leases are starting to go away and people are buying their own smaller buildings out of a safe of a sense of security like they want to they want to have control they want to know that the place is clean they want to know that the you know air conditioning unit is is uh is up to snuff like they want to know they want a lot more you know sort of knowledge than they had before uh, there was an awful lot of trust. And what we're finding is that, and when I say we, not RMLS, but the commercial brokers that I've talked to, uh, what they're saying is people are looking to buy. There, there's a lot of small buildings that sat around being for sale for years, and now they're getting snatched up left and right. I think hmm. that's kind of, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know we as a company have started talking about that. We haven't pulled the trigger on it yet, but we have started yeah. talking about, you know. I mean, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm curious as to the real estate population. I, I yeah. what I saw in the 2008 to 2012 correction. 2008, we had an all-time high. Our market was booming for a solid 10 years. Yep. 2012, it it you know was cut down considerably, almost yeah. in half. Well, once you hit bottom and bounce and start going back up our numbers keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's sort of reflective of the market. It's like, hey, I want to be a realtor. All you do is you put your stick in the ground, you get paid all this money, you don't have to do anything. Yeah. So we have 10 years of fast and furious. What's our what's RMLS's subscriber number look like? 
So we just hit an all time high for the first time in the history of the world. Our MLS has over 16,000 subscribers. It's not much more than that, but we do have more than 16,000. How many in Portland Metro and feel free to include and exclude Vancouver, you know, Clark County. I'm, I'm very curious because I always am quoting this. I, my guess is somewhere around 12, 14, whether you're including Clark County. Yeah. That yeah. That's exactly right. It's around there. I don't have the numbers right off the top yeah. of my head, but they're it's, it's you're, you're spot on from the last okay. report. Okay. And what were we before the pandemic? Cause I have to think that it's grown. It's, it's, it's increased dramatically. It, it has. So we waited for years and years and years to break the 15,000 mark. We got up to it several times and flirted with that line forever. And then finally, in 2020, we broke the 15,000 subscriber mark. And then this year we broke 16,000. So it went okay. up dramatically. Okay. And I don't have any numbers to back this up. But anecdotally, I've told everyone, I've told our shareholders, I've told our board of directors, it's, it's obvious that people are sitting at home, they're watching, you know, home and garden television, they're saying, I can do that. And then they're going out and they're giving it a shot. Mm -hmm. And, and that's fine. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But you can tell that there's a, you know, there's a renewed interest in real estate. Uh, when you're looking at a, a world in which everyone's talking about the great resignation and everyone's quitting their jobs, it's amazing that a bunch of them are thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to give real estate a try. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very attractive and it's a very cool industry. Like you guys are the, you guys are the cool kids. <laughs> well, well and, and also remember during, the, during the pandemic, there was a lot of people let go from um, like jobs that, that I think were especially attracted to real estate. I mean, servers, a lot, a lot oh, yeah. of, a lot of, a lot of industries. Yeah, shut their doors for many, many months. I mean, this this feels like a long time ago at this point, but you know, it wasn't that long ago. It was a year nope. and a half ago. Yeah, and and those people and they were and they were getting big bucks from the government to yep. to do nothing. Yep. What a natural time in their minds um, to 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 live off that money and and make the make a go at it and. Yep. Yeah, I, I think we're going to see that number. I think you're going to see that number peaking, Kurt. I'm, I'm yeah. predicting right here, right now. We're not hitting 17,000. No, it's no. going to it's going to start to go down. And yeah. uh, in fact, know, Lawrence Yoon from the National Association of Realtors is predicting we will hit nationally. We will hit a high in the number of realtors in November of this year. But that the come down is going to be slow. This won't be like 2010 and 2011. Um, I, those days were awful. I remember we went from 15,000 subscribers down to 10,000 subscribers in about two years. And it was a, it was an absolute misery. And, you know, it's really difficult to budget during those times. <laughs> like, what are we yeah. going to, what are we going to spend on lock boxes when we're going to have about two thirds of the subscribers we used to have? So budgeting can be really hurt by that. But Lawrence's prediction is we hit, a high uh, in the number of realtors in uh, November of this year. And then over the next five years, we slowly, slowly, slowly start to dwindle. Mm -hmm. And his reasoning behind that is that there are still people in jobs that they hate. There are still people looking for a reset. Uh, while at exactly the same time, there's a number of people that are like, yeah, I gave it a shot. Didn't work. And we're going to we're going to see that turn around. So mm -hmm. we'll see how close he is. Traditionally, we don't, Oregon is usually about a year behind the national trends, uh, but I think he's probably pretty close. And I think you're right, Steve, there's no way we get to 17,000 subscribers. It just doesn't happen. Um, but I don't think we're looking at the mass exodus that we had about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You already are seeing vibes of it on social media. I mean, if I was scrolling through my thread yesterday and um, and I and I think there's a segment of the agents, you know, probably some of the newer ones, probably some of the less experienced ones. It kind of gets in their head. Right. Like and, and that that can be that's 90 percent of the battle is to not, you know, get consumed with fear or uncertainty or lack of confidence. Right. You know, you start seeing stats about major national companies laying off. You start seeing what mortgage rates are doing. You start, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's easy if you don't 
if you let it to start getting that pit in your stomach and, and feeling uncertain and, and, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the kiss of death in this business. I mean, yep. you can't, you can't go out and conquer the world and get in front of a seller and convince them to work with you or a buyer for that matter. If, if you yourself have, have those jitters and, yep. and I, I just am already sensing it in, even just on social media that there's oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, mm -hmm. I think, you know, I, I can tell you in the last downturn, those realtors that I saw make it through the best were those who said, yeah, the market's going to be rough for a while. And I know exactly what to do in this market as well. I just pivot. I just mm -hmm. do things differently. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a really good lesson for all of us. It doesn't matter if you're in real estate or the MLS world or an association, or if you're working at Target, if things turn around, you just pivot. You change the way you did things before and you adjust. Mm -hmm. It's possible. And it's possible to make a ton of money in a down market. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I posted this in Masters and Real Estate Group the other day. Uh, it was Warren Buffett who said, uh, you know, make yourself inflation proof. Mm -hmm. Be the absolute best at your job yep. that people come to seek you out, right? Right, right? Which is the same thing we've been kind of chanting in real estate, master your craft, whatever it is you do, be the very best you can. Martin yeah. Luther King said, if you're a street sweeper, be the best damn street <laughs> sweeper in the entire world. And when you die and go to heaven, they're like, man, that guy was a great street sweeper. <laughs> and yeah. that's how you make yourself inflation proof and yep, yep. it's making yourself indispensable and having people gravitate to you and when the number of realtors diminish uh you gotta you are responsible for a little bit bigger piece of the pie mm -hmm. and yeah that's the thing that i always tell people is that when the realtors start to leave um rmls the big winners are the people that stick around because there's a statistic that I watch every single year and that's the number of listings per subscriber. And when people start to leave, the number of listings per subscriber goes up. And I know that's not how the world works. We don't take all the listings and we divvy them up equally amongst everyone. But the the spirit of the of the message is that once everyone starts leaving, there's more share of the pie for you. Mm hmm. What well, is it's, that number? it's hard to compete with friends and family, right? Like yeah. some, sometimes the, 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 the most fierce competitor, mm -hmm. you know, an agent like Joe or I could have is, is, you know, is that that seller or buyer who's like, yeah, junior just got their license and yeah. we're going to give them a go at it. I mean, like, how do you compete with that? Right. You, so I guess you don't. I mean, everyone's <laughs> going to do that. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what that sales pitch would look like. Forget about your nephew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you have a bad transaction, he's always going to be your nephew. <laughs> Maybe find someone that you don't know. Maybe someone you don't even like, but you think is good. That's a good angle, Joe. Joe. I like that one. So lost. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. So I'm curious, uh, statistically speaking, uh, so we have 16,000. Yeah. What is, is that an annual statistic? I mean, what is the number per broker? Is it still that one and a half listing? Oh, I would have to look it up. On I, average? I, I know it's not very high. I know we have a, a, a very small percentage of people that do 90% yeah. of the business and a very large percentage that hardly yeah. do anything. And it's wildly different in every area and it's wildly different every single month. So every single time I run it, it's wildly different. So I don't have those numbers in front of me, but I can tell you we are at the point right now where the indicators are such that we might have too many subscribers. Like there's, there's a point at which every geographic region has too many realtors in it and that number needs to come down. But luckily, I think from my from my standpoint, it's going to happen slowly, and that's probably that's probably uh, I think that's a healthy way of doing it in the market, because we what we don't want is the the consumer sentiment to change in either. Because the minute everyone hears, oh my God, every, no one's being a realtor anymore, they also lose face in the market as well. So mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think having strength in the market is is good. I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that makes me think of two questions. So with a record number amount of realtors, right? Mm -hmm. We have yeah. much more inexperienced realtors there. Yeah. And I know that you guys are your own entity. You're completely different from the real estate commissioner. However, yeah. uh, I'd love to know the number one 
realtor to realtor report. Like when a realtor reports another realtor for something, what normally is that? And then I know uh, Wanda in your office, uh, <laughs> yeah. you guys have your own warnings that you shoot out and say, hey, you did this, please fix it. Right. Yeah. Do you happen to know those, uh, so, what those are? Traditionally, it's the, the highest number is always some form of data entry error. So people are constantly hitting the, by, by the way, I should say, anyone who hits the report or there's an issue with this listing button in RMLS web, totally anonymous. No one needs to worry about that. You can hit that all day long. You guys don't know who it is or you don't, you don't share it, which oh, is- Oh no, we know who it is. Okay, okay. You have to call yeah, you yeah. back. You would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes we need clarification, but we yeah. don't have any way of sharing who that is. Yeah. And then Wanda or Valerie or someone will pick up the phone and just make a phone call. Traditionally, it's like school district is one of the biggest ones. Like you put this in the wrong school district. And I can say it's like 9.2 times out of 10. As soon as we make that phone call, they go, oh, oops, and they fix it right away. Like the whole thing is fixed within an hour or two hours. Uh, it's very rare, but it does happen that we get something where someone has put in you know, they fat fingered the square footage or something like that. And we just can't get them on the phone and it lingers for a while. But for the most time, those are really easy fixes. They're totally anonymous. Branding I and photos. Think. I bet a lot of signs get accidentally put mm -hmm. in a photo and it shows yep. their name and you have to, that gets flagged. You know, I'm like pretty that. proud. We've made that number go down dramatically and we're going to make it go down even more dramatically. Um, we have, we tasked our help desk every single morning goes through every single video and photo that's added into our database. And we catch most of those ourselves. Oh, wow. Okay. We don't, we don't get a lot of calls on that. That doesn't mean don't call us again, totally anonymous. Please call us if you find anything that we've missed, but we usually find those ourselves. And we've recently been working, uh, with a third party who's going to help us use artificial intelligence to find those. So as soon as the listing is added, RMLS web itself will start notifying you and us and saying, I think I found a sign or, mm -hmm. you know, I think I found someone, someone seems to have put their own name on top of this picture and mm -hmm. we'll be able to find that ourselves just using AI, which will be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there was, there was one time years ago, uh, two times mm -hmm. election year, uh, that was really crazy. And there were two sides and people were fighting each other and the whole coming soon debacle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now that the coming soon has been implemented and we still kind of have a hot market, mm -hmm. but it, nobody seems to care about that anymore. I mean, people were passionate. That was the hill they were prepared to die on with coming yeah. soon. And mm -hmm. are people even doing coming soons anymore? Yeah, yeah, they still use coming soons. Are you talking about the RMLS coming soon? Uh, yeah, 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 okay, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, they still do it. It's a it's a small part of the market. It's not it's not as, as prevalent as everyone was saying. We get this, this all comes in cycles. There was a period of time where people were saying every listing in the database is gonna be an auction. Uh, it was the same thing with coming soon. Everyone's going to be doing this. They want to. They want to build buzz about a property that's coming. It's about seven or eight percent of the listings that are added. Uh, it's not very large, and for those people that do it, it's very targeted. So uh, coming soon, you can enter into the database, and you've got twenty-one days to pre-advertise it if you want to, but you can't have any showings. It turns out that the the median number of days in the coming soon status is six. So people are doing this in a very targeted situation where they're like, look, we ran into a problem. We're about a week out from going live. Let's get a little bit of buzz going. Let's get some showing scheduled. And then uh, we're going to go active and allow the whole marketplace in. Uh, can, can I explain what, how, why that is the case? I mean, I, I'm, yes. I'm probably your perfect example of the, a person who uses it. It's, um, it's so you can have your sign put in front before you're live. And it's so you can probably send an e-flyer out to a bunch of agents going, hey, this is going to hit the market Friday. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, you need your photos. So if your photos are Friday, you're, pro you're probably taking it coming soon that day or Monday. 
Mm-hmm. And um, Wednesday, you're putting your sign in the yard and you're um, sending out an e-flyer and you're on the market Friday. I mean, it right. works great for that. I don't know that we use coming soon necessarily, even though I don't think it hurts to, right. to get it in front of a bunch of agents on RMLS. I mean, right. we're we're probably what we're more doing is tr- keeping out, trying to keep out of trouble. I mean, I have had one time where Wanda called me, I think, and we'd our timing was just ever so slightly off. Like right, we sent right. the e-flyer out and somebody complained that we weren't coming soon. And right. I, I got my hand slapped and and we've been more careful since. But um, that's that's really what, what I think coming soon works well for. Yes. And in a, in a tight market like this one, there is an argument for, listen, I can't find anything for my buyers. But the point of the coming soon status was that a realtor would know, listen, that house on the end, that's going to be going live in seven days. Like, I know that information, but the consumer doesn't know it. It's not going to show up on Zillow. It's not going to show up on Facebook. It's not going to show up anywhere. But I can I can tell you that one's coming in about seven days, and we'll be able to see it then. Mm-hmm. Like, that type of information really increases the value of our Realtor subscriber. And that's what we're here to do, is to make you look better. And in a tight market like this one, that becomes, that's 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 really valuable. Once things flip around and there's more listings than we know what to do with, uh, I don't know that that coming mm-hmm. soon has as much value as it does now, but maybe it'll still be used. I agree. I do agree I with see, that. So uh, we can make a coming soon search for realtors. Realtors can see it. There's mm-hmm. no automatic feed where we can send it to no. our prospective buyers. I mean, no. we could manually make a PDF and send mm-hmm. it to them. But I see in my coming soon search, there's lots and lots of pendings. And I'm curious if a significant number of those coming soons go from coming soon to pending versus coming soon to active to pending. You know, the thing is, Joe, you bring up a really good question. It's not, it's not all that often. But what we're finding is that when it does happen, it hurts more and people remember those situations. But it's like a small percentage of the properties go from coming soon directly into pending. It does happen. It's just that when it happens, everyone notices it way more than the thousands of times when it didn't happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just how human beings work. I mean, I'm exactly the same way. I could drive through three green lights, but the minute I get stopped at a red light, I'm like, oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Good deeds go unnoticed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. First time something goes wrong, everything is horrible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, Kurt, I had a couple comments about RMLS. Uh, first of all, I love the new homepage. Good. That's Thank a you. really pretty house. I think it's modernized your feel. And mm-hmm. I know that's something that you guys have been criticized about and, or, you know, and, 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 and I, I, I like that. I love that you added more watches. Good. Did you Thank notice you. that, Joe? I know we talked, I think we talked about that with Kurt Up last to 200. Time. That's my yep. favorite. Yeah. One yep. of my favorite features. You can yeah. watch a listing or you can watch a tax record even. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. And that we have 200 now. Mm-hmm. And I had maxed mine recently. I had, it was just about two, three months ago. I was, I went to watch something. It was grayed out. The button was grayed out. And I'm like, it kind of threw me off for a little bit. And I was right. like, I know. And, and then we did some research. I think actually one of my people called in and, oh yeah, you're, you're at your max. So we had to go in and delete some. Yep. So thank you for, thank you for doing that. The oh, infographics, um, the infographics are great. The, yeah. the market uh, report is great. Mm-hmm. And what a lot of the, your subscribers don't know, and, and this is probably the, the worst thing possible, is that RMLS, from our dues, everything that we pay, yeah, you provide stuff. You'll come out right. and say, hey, you get Remine, or hey, right. you, know, you get this, you get this. And people are like, oh, well, okay. You know, they, they don't yeah. fall over themselves being yeah. abundantly thankful, yeah. but they don't know that from our dues, RMLS is subsidizing those. Yep. Those platforms do not come to you for free. That's right. You have to have uh, board meetings and say, what is the latest and best thing for our consumers that we're going to pick up the tab for? Right. 
I think yeah, that's, and that's the hardest part is to try and figure out to combine the last few topics to try and figure out what products and services can we provide where nobody has to pay for it out of pocket. We'll just provide it for them while at exactly the same time trying to figure out we're going to have fewer subscribers than we used to have. <laughs> like we got to take that into account as well. Yeah. And no one's given us a break on this stuff and nothing's getting less expensive. Hey, Kurt, I have a tiny little feedback. That's yeah. that's the luxury of having a podcast with Kurt on it is you get yeah. <laughs> you get face to face time with Kurt with one little one little uh, tick. Yeah. Hey, um, how, first of all, how how often does it time out? Is it every hour that you didn't do something? Is it half hour? Is it two hours? Do you know? Yeah, it's I think it's four hours at this point. OK, it's an incredibly long period of time. And I do want to say if anyone is getting logged out faster than that you've probably shared your password with someone i, I know or, that i know that and i recently changed my password because I, I was worried maybe a team member had it and so right. yeah um but but what i here's my here's my my one little maybe wish list sure is um if it logs you out could it be more obvious that you're logged out so you don't start start typing a bunch of stuff and doing a bunch of work and then go click search and it's like oh log in and now you lost everything you had typed oh, i know it's it sounds really small no. but like i'll i'll have an address of something and i'll yeah. I'll, I'll have the search bar up I don't know i'm timed out so i'm just like putting in you know and i'm transposing putting in the address I click this and then boom, it takes me to the, the login page. Mm. I click login and I'm back to zero again. Um, okay. Yeah. It's yeah. Let me see what we can do about that. Cause there's a number of options we have available. Maybe we could, maybe we can look into that. Whereas if it had, if it had just taken me to the, you're logged out page, I would have clicked login first before I wasted right. that little bit of effort. Right. But yeah, what, what, what new stuff do you have coming, Kurt? So we have we have kind of a big announcement coming. Uh, it's not we're not announcing it anywhere but here. You guys will get the the first crack at it. Uh, for those of you who have been paying attention, we have we started a group called MLS Aligned years and years and years ago, and it's a it's a cooperative movement among several MLSs around the nation. Uh, basically, a bunch of us got together and we were complaining about the same stuff. Like if you remember back a couple of several years ago, our CRM wasn't working. And I was complaining about that. And several other MLSs around the country said, oh, our CRM isn't working either. We haven't been able to bill anyone in a quarter. And we just started realizing, like, what's the point of all of us going through this alone when we're not competing with each other? And so uh, our MLS, the Arizona Regional Multiple Listing Service, the Metro MLS in Wisconsin, utahrealestate.com, and MLS listings in Silicon Valley formed this thing called MLS Align. And what we did is we put a little bit of money into a third-party company that we own, and we just started making stuff. Uh, the first thing we made was a fully live database of all of our data that people could ping whenever they wanted. So if you think about the way like realtor.com works, they go to every MLS, they take all their data and they put it in this huge data repository. Well, for anyone who's a member of an MLS aligned uh, database, you don't get all of the data. You just ping it every time you need it and it gives you the information. It's just a fully live API with all of our data on it. You can pull it. And so for, for products like statistics information, you don't need a huge data warehouse for that. Just give me the average price of this and pull it over. Mm -hmm. uh, we have that available for the entire nation. Homes.com now uses that as their primary source of data for all of our MLSs. And we've been putting together like our mobile app came out as a part of MLS Aligned. We worked on that together. Um, and the latest thing that we did was we purchased a product called Agent Inbox. And Agent Inbox was uh, several years ago, an agent communication tool and a showing product. And we bought it for a song uh, we bought it for about $800,000, and then all five MLSs started working on Agent Inbox to turn it into the world-class showing product that we need in this area. Uh, as you know, right now we use Showing Time, and Showing Time has been purchased by Zillow. 
Well, Zillow is now a brokerage. They're one of our subscribers and having something like a showing product being owned by one of our brokerages is distasteful. It's not illegal. We don't have any rules against it. It's just not, it's not great. That coupled with the fact that we don't know who's going to buy showing time next, we don't have any control over it. So our board put a little bit of money into this and we've been working with uh, MLS Align to build a brand new product, which is called Showings Align. And uh, it looks like Silicon Valley will be going first at the end of June. They will be rolling it out to their subscribers. Utah will be going second. Uh, and we may be rolling this product out for people to use as early as the fall of this year. Wow, big we news. Yeah, we will have our own showing product that is owned by RMLS and several other multiple listing services. It's not new. It's not new ground for RMLS. As you know, RMLS likes to do things themselves. We want to own our own system. We want to build our own system. We want to do we want to have control. Uh, and this will allow us to control the data. It'll allow us to control who owns it and purchases it in the future. It's a great idea. I really applaud our board for having this foresight. And I'm really excited to start showing this product to people because I think I think you're going to love it. It's it's pretty fantastic. That's it's awesome. That's awesome. It's kind of nice that you have like Silicon Valley people in the mix. I mean, that's, oh, that's yeah. kinda, those are probably they, they got all the locals there, you know, in yeah. their in their market yep. that do this stuff. You know, that's yep. that's their wheelhouse. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. I love it that the 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 data to own that data is brilliant especially yeah. for you guys. That yeah. is paramount. Yeah. Number 2, to get it out of the hands of somebody who became a certified brokerage. I mm -hmm. think that's only smart. Yeah. Not illegal, but yeah. it's smart on on our part. And is this another like a subsidized thing that it's free to the brokers uh and they use it is there a subscription fee? Yeah, we haven't even settled on a price yet. So I can tell you that uh, the minute we purchased Agent Inbox, we had a list of 35 MLSs who were interested in purchasing services from us. And we know that there's demand out there. We know that there's a lot of MLSs that want in on this. We're not anywhere close to offering this product to anyone else. I very firmly believe you eat your own dog food first and then start marketing it. So we will, all of us will be on. Um, most recently, we added a new member to MLS Aligned, uh, and that is Beaches MLS down in Florida, uh, bought into the product or into the group. And uh, they are now one of the uh, owners of MLS Aligned. And one of the reasons they bought in was they were very excited about developing this uh, Aligned showings. So we mm -hmm. will have, or and we will i mean this product is going to be good we we will not release it until we get to minimal functionality so we were almost about to release in the beginning of june and then a bunch of uh people said no you have to have the ability for the homeowner themselves to schedule the showings apparently Absolutely. some homeowners want to do that that wasn't <laughs> we know we're just data jockeys like what do we know so we delayed until we can get that rolled out but there's that times a hundred other things have delayed this over and over and over again, but we're getting ready to go and we're pretty excited about it. And and it will replace showing time? I mean, is it fair to say in about a year from now, there will be no showing time op optionality out of- there, there is a little bit of gray around that. Um, showing time has said that they would be willing to work with us on two-way communication. So if something is scheduled in showings aligned, uh, that it would just block out time in showing time and vice versa. If somebody used something to schedule some time in showing time, it would block out time in our product, but they're not putting their money where their mouth is. So we will probably lean heavily on showings aligned on our own product. And we will build that into our MLS web and make it super convenient and super easy for everybody. But we're always open to working with other products if they want to do it the right way. Um, if anyone starts to tell us, no, we'll decide how the data is stored and we'll decide when and who gets to access it. No, no, no. Like RMLS is very firm. We will own that data. That's our data. 
Uh, and we need, we need to be able to do things like tell you on a moment's notice how many showings happened in the past 24 hours, right? There's mm -hmm. a number of things that we need to be able to do. And on a granular scale, be able to tell you, oh, based on showings, this neighborhood's super hot and this one's starting to cool down. Like there's a number of things that we could do that's super exciting, but we have to have the data in order to do that. We can't rely on some third party. Mm -hmm. Very exciting, Kurt. I, I remember, Joe, Joe, I think on a podcast right, right after Zillow bought um, Showing Time, which by the way, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they wish they had that half billion dollars back these days. <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> but um, I remember, I, I think it was, it was either in Masters. I mean, I, I remember you, you, you were uh, a little concerned about that vocally or maybe it was on a podcast and as were a lot of other people. And so this is fantastic. It's fantastic to have that independence and that connection to, to the MLS. And it's also fantastic. I'm sure we'll be able to, you know, help you guys shape it. You know, you'll, you'll take yep. great feedback and you'll yes. in incorporate it. Yeah. Into yeah, it's one of the works. things that's most important to our MLS, as you know, is we need to be able to respond to what you guys tell us. If you need something, we have to be able to do it. And having third party products doesn't really give us that flexibility. Uh, so this is a win win for us. Could mm -hmm. you could you please buy all of the Oregon and Washington MLSs so <laughs> we don't have to mess around with that? It's like, oh, hey, there's a place in Salem. Oh, wait, it's not an RMLS. I got to go to WV or, oh, at the coast, I got to go to Flex. Yeah, oh, it's northern Washington. I mean, it's like, yeah, why can't our licensing, you know, we're, we're good for the entire state of Oregon, the entire state of Washington. Our MLS should be at the very least, if, if you don't buy all those other people, it should be required that it's in RMLS as well. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <laughs> we, you know, each one of those markets has a weird little hiccup, like the Salem area, for instance, they don't require their subscribers to be realtors. So they're not members of what we would call PMAR. They're not members of the Oregon Association of Realtors. They're not members of NAR. And as such, they don't even qualify for RMLS services. So it's, it's difficult for us to go down there and, and, you know, sell them on it because we also have to sell them on realtor membership and there's a number of different quirks in each of those areas interesting the coast i'm not all that worried about we have like 97 percent crossover with the coast so somebody you know, told uh, me that the other day kurt yeah. uh i uh one of our agents over in seaside um was he has a high-end property he was ask it's an it's a family member and he was asking me about maybe co-listing it together mm -hmm. um and I, I asked him, I said, okay, so you have the local MLS. He goes, yeah, but it's not really that important. Everything right. is RMLS over here. Right. Yeah, he yeah. did say that. That was yeah. interesting. So I, don't, I don't spend a lot of time marketing to the coast because I wouldn't, I, how's it going to pay for itself? Everyone's already a subscriber. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Interesting. And then Medford is too far away. I don't think I don't, I don't, I've no, no one's ever called me and said, let's get Medford. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't think Joe was saying that either. Hey, yeah. I have a question, Kurt, back to some data stuff. Yeah. You guys, do you guys track price reductions and back on market or like was pending, but is now active again? We do track the status changes, yes, but we don't track, we, we don't do a very good job of tracking price reductions. We have that data in the database. It's available to us. We just haven't done anything with it. Although with this market, we probably will start looking at that. It I would think. be really interesting. I would love to see that in our monthly report, like this many listings drop their price, this right. percentage. Yeah. Uh, maybe percentage of price drops, you know, the average mm -hmm. price drop was 2% or 1% or five, whatever. Yeah. And then I think they, they always say, and I believe this to be the case that terminations are a good indicator of a market changing. Mm. So, um, you know, as people, as people get cold feet and they're just nervous and mm -hmm. it'll be, it would be interesting to know, you know, what type of, you know, back on market activity was happening. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to take both of those. We will, um, as I've mentioned, Grant is our communication specialist, but we have Jared, who's our statistician, and I'll put them back on that. And what we'll do, traditionally what we do is we'll start with a number of articles on the newsletter page. And that's usually our way of just announcing to subscribers, hey, we may have noticed something. 
<laughs> like we're going to start talking about that. And then if it does turn into something that's either super interesting or super reliable, then we'll start talking about rolling it into market action. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there you go. Or something, something. Yeah. Like. There you go. That'd be great. Yeah. Cool. Hey, and Joe, you, uh, you had your, your questions. Did we cover all those? I think we did. And we're hitting about that hour mark. So mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, oh, different markets. Have you, the, the only question we didn't, different markets. Do you follow up stuff in other markets, Kurt at all? Uh, it depends on which markets. Some like Bend, I mean, even Oregon or even beyond. No, we do. We're doing a little bit of data sharing with Milwaukee, Wisconsin, because we're trying to do a Milwaukee versus Milwaukee, but I don't do an awful lot of sharing of information with uh, Bend. Yeah. Okay. It was just curious if, if there was anything you were hearing in other markets. Well, well, uh, let's wrap it up then, Joe. Right. Let's do it. That was great, Kurt. I, I know that uh, we'll probably think of a dozen other things after we uh, end this, but you're always a great, great guest and so much information. And this uh, Agent Align that you're kind of letting us know about first, I, I'm really excited for... Uh, a, a showing time competitor that yeah. is in-house. Hmm. I'm looking forward to having more statistics. Yeah. If we, hopefully it'll incorporate feedback in it. So you mm -hmm. get to analyze that data as well. And it makes it easy for us to get the message to the listing agent of, of all that. And uh, if we ask you to uh, come back in the future to share more great stuff, or are you willing to do that maybe before the end of the year? Yes. Gentlemen, I am always thrilled to be a part of this podcast. It's always a lot of fun for me. So thanks for having me on and I'll come back anytime you ask. Hey, we all have right. a couple quick comments. First of all, um, oh, Cheryl no Clunas. comments. That's it. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl. Well, this one was good for you. Kurt. <laughs> Cheryl Clunas says we love all caps. Kurt Von Wasmuth. Oh, um, Cheryl. Thank Jody you. Hewitt was, has laughing emojis. So I'm guessing <laughs> Kurt said something funny. <laughs> Because he's the funny one on here. <laughs> and then Ryan Jacobson said, back on market and price changes are in the hot sheet, but you can only go back 45 days. So That's true. there's something I did not know. So yes. awesome. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Portland Real Estate Podcast, Oregon and Washington's number one show for cutting edge real estate discussions. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to the members of Masters in Real Estate, a private and exclusive Facebook group, and the number one source for all real estate topics. Thanks for being there, gang. I love you. Finally, I want to thank our faithful listeners. Without an audience, we're just two guys talking to each other. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so the new episodes automatically come to you. Make it great. <laughs>